In this film, we're going to look at the clothes we wear, well, at least some of them, and see what they're made of and how they're made. These children are wearing jeans and anoraks, which are very popular today. About a hundred years ago, they would have worn quite different clothes. The fashion in clothes is always changing. Human beings are the only creatures that need clothes. To feel comfortable, we must protect our bodies against cold, heat, wind and rain. Look how carefully mother dresses her baby to keep him warm. These lambs are less than a day old. They were born with a warm coat of curly hair. The dog has a coat of long hair. Cattle have thick skins as well as hair. In winter and in cold countries, the hair grows longer. Most birds grow their feathers quite soon after they are born. The feathers keep them warm, even in water. The polar bear lives in a very cold part of the world. His thick fur protects him from the cold winds and icy water. This is a seal. He spends most of his life in the water. He couldn't survive without his thick skin and fur. Unlike animals, you and I have only thin skins and very little hair on our bodies. So we wear clothes most of the time. What then are our clothes made from? Some of them are made from the skins of animals. This girl is wearing a coat and hat of sheepskin. The skin or hide of cattle is also used to make some of the things we wear. In this factory, the hides are made into leather. Our boots and shoes have been made from leather for hundreds of years. Nowadays, other materials are used as well but the best footwear is still made from leather. Most of our clothes are made of cloth, which can be produced from different sources. The wool of the sheep is one of them. The fruit of the cotton plant is another. When the flower has withered, the cotton fruit is left, seeds covered with a mass of fine hairs. It is these which we use to make cloth. Cotton is grown only in very warm countries. Cloth is made of threads woven under and over each other. In just the same way as canes in a basket. So how do we make these threads from raw materials like cotton and wool? First, the tangled fibres, finer than your hair, are combed to make them all run in the same direction. This process is called carding. Wool can be carded by hand or by machine.
you can see how the teeth on the rollers do the same work as a comb, separating the fibres. The fibres are gathered together and wound loosely onto a spool, ready to be made into thread. This is a spinning wheel. Do you remember the wool that was carded by hand? Now the fibres are being twisted together to make the strong, even thread we need to make cloth. The finished thread is wound onto a bobbin. See how the girl uses her hands to keep the thickness of the thread even. You can't see what happens inside a spinning machine. It really works in just the same way as a spinning wheel, but much faster. How about making threads from oil or coal? Chemicals are mixed and heated and squeezed out through very small holes. In this way, threads are formed which quickly cool and are wound onto bobbins. There are many different kinds of these man-made threads or fibres. Nylon is one of them. You will remember that cloth is made by weaving threads over and under another set of threads. You can see this clearly if you pull threads from a piece of fabric. Let's see how this weaving is done. For weaving, you use a loom. This is a hand loom you could have at home. The lady has set up all the threads running in one direction, away from her, and is making a rag rug, weaving strips of material across from one side to the other and back. As with carding and spinning, most weaving is now done much more quickly in factories on big electric looms. See how the colour of this blue denim cloth was obtained. One set of threads was dyed dark blue before being woven. Sometimes cloth is dyed after being woven or has a coloured pattern printed onto it. The finished material is sold in shops to people who like to make their own clothes. Many people make their own clothes at home but it does take a long time.
the tailor makes clothes to order. He usually sits cross-legged on his work table because he can then support the material on his knees. But nowadays, most of our clothes are made in factories. All the different pieces of material needed for a garment are cut out in large numbers at one time. Each machinist makes a different part of the garment. Can you guess what kind of garment this is going to be? Clothes from the factory are sold to big stores, clothes shops and boutiques. The garments are made in various sizes and we choose the ones that fit us. Have you ever tried to knit? It's not very easy to begin with, is it? But knitting is another way in which we can make clothes from threads of wool, cotton and nylon. This baby's jumper was probably knitted at home. But you may buy knitted garments such as warm scarves and hats. You remember how we saw leather being used to make shoes? Well, these boots are made of rubber. Rubber boots are best for keeping our feet dry. But what is rubber exactly? It comes from a tree which grows only in tropical countries. Large numbers of rubber trees are grown together on plantations. Rubber is made from the sap found under the bark. When a groove is cut in the bark, the sap begins to trickle from the tree trunk. From this sap, which is called latex, we make rubber in different forms. Sponge rubber, for instance. Here we see rubber boots being made. All the various pieces needed to make a boot are glued together. Finally, the sole is glued to the upper part. So, we've seen how some of our clothes are made and the materials we need to make them. Hides are used. To make leather for boots and shoes and some coats as well. A sheep's skin can keep us warm too. Sheep give us wool, which we can spin and weave or knit. We can also make clothes from plants such as cotton, 
which is used for shirts and jeans. But more and more of our clothes are made from man-made fibre. 